Fluke died in a car accident and was reincarnated as a dog, now running towards his wife and son and leaning on the car window. Carol was startled and slammed on the car door to try to chase him away and close the window. So the dog went around to the passenger side and leaned out the window on his son's side of the car, hoping that his son would recognize him. Carol ignored the dog and drove off, but the dog continued to follow him until, after 10 kilometers, he finally saw a familiar house and ran happily over to it, scratching at the door with his paws. Carol refused to open the door to the dog's frantic pestering. However, the dog didn't give up and made a detour outside the kitchen to look at her with pleading eyes. Seeing that Carol was still not moved, he even rolled on the floor to be cute. Carol finally softened her heart. As the door was opened, the dog jumped on her son and licked his cheeks. After pleading with her son, Carol agrees to adopt the dog for one day, but he knew that in the eyes of his family, he was just a stray dog who had come into their lives. Because his wife and son could never have imagined that he was reincarnated as a Labrador. In order to return to them, he was born with the memories of his past life and broke out of the cage. The janitor soon catches Fluke and wants to teach him a lesson. But Fluke suddenly pees all over the janitor, free and with nowhere to go. Fluke is taken in by a homeless woman. She reads poetry on the street for a living, but no one stops to listen to her in the rush of pedestrians. The old woman takes out a couple of walnut skins, and Fluke plays a game of search. Fluke was able to pick the right place for the walnuts every time. Their game gradually attracted pedestrians, and the old woman made a fortune. The two of them lived like this for some time. One night, the old woman fell asleep and never woke up. He thought she was going to be a helpless dog again. But then, at dawn, a big black dog came to talk to her. Rumble was a more skilled dog than Fluke. He taught Fluke how to lift his leg to pee and how to wag his tail to get a treat. Rumble took him home and his owner kindly took Fluke in. Every day, they go to a hot dog store in the marketplace. The store manager had a picture of a man behind him. Fluke used to look at the picture and ask Rumble if he was born a dog. Rumble whacked his tail and didn't answer. Fluke always thought he was more than a dog. One day he looked at the license plate number on a broken car and suddenly remembered a phone number. So he ran into the house and pressed the number with his paw. When the call came through, a woman's voice was on the other end. Hello, is anybody there? Fluke listens to the sadness in her voice. Compared to Fluke, Rumbo's life is much simpler. He was satisfied with his life as a dog, waiting for his meat in front of the hot dog store. One day Fluke saw a customer stealing something. He barked at the customer and tried to stop him. But the man took it up a notch and stomped on Rumbo's tail on his way out. Fluke couldn't help but bite the man in anger. The man then approached Rumbo's owner and demanded compensation. Fluke spent the night chained up in the yard in the rain. He recalled some vague memories. Two cars were traveling side by side on a mountain road, and one of them knocked the other down the mountain. And the man in that car, Fluke had seen in a newsstand magazine the other day. If he was on the cover of a business magazine, he must be a successful man. Fluke always felt he should have lived that life himself. But in reality, he was a dog and an unlucky one at that. That day, the man who was bitten captured Fluke and sold him to an institute where all kinds of animals are kept. The researcher put drops in Fluke's eyes. Fluke's eyes are slowly losing their sight as a result of the drug. While Fluke is being operated on, Rumbo breaks through the glass and enters the lab. Rumbo bites the researcher and drags him to the ground. Then he releases all the animals by precisely pressing the red door opener. Finally, he switches off the device and frees Fluke as well. Since Fluke can't see, Rumbo makes him bite his tail and follows him out. Behind them comes danger. The man who was bitten had a gun trained on them. His dog broke into the institute a few days ago and pushed the button to open the door to the cages holding the animals. When a puppy is afraid to jump, an ape jumps up and carries him down. The animals live in perfect harmony. Until this man pulled out a pistol and shot Rumbo. To keep Fluke alive, Rumbo braces himself and carries him to the river. At that moment, Fook's vision cleared, he saw Rumbo's bleeding wounds, and knew that Rumbo was on the verge of death. Before he died, Rumbo revealed his secret. It turns out that Rumbo was a human being in his past life. The picture hanging in the hot dog store is Rumbo's past life. The owner of the hot dog store was Rumbo's best friend in his past life. Rumbo was inseparable from his friend when he was alive, and now he wants to be by his friend's side, even if he has to be a dog in the next life. Fook was deeply touched, he gently placed his head on Rumbo's body to say goodbye to him. Then he followed his memory and set out on a long journey home. He traveled through the woods, across meadows, over streams, and even jumped on a train. After many dangers, he finally made it back home. Fluke arrives at a school to pick up his son. As the children came out one by one, he looked through the crowd but never found his son. Finally, Fluke looked around and spotted his son across the street. Fluke crossed the street and risked being hit by a school bus to stop the mother and her son. In an almost scurrilous and petulant manner, 
He wins his ex-wife's permission to stay at her house. His wife and son would tickle him affectionately, Fook wiped his tail in happiness. At night, Brian would lie on the floor and play games. A doll that Fluke had picked up and hidden under the bed, was quickly found by Brian. As his father used to play with him all the time, Brian hugged Fluke tightly, and his mind was filled with memories of his father. When it was time for bed, Carol put Fluke in a room by himself, but Fluke swung the door open, and ran to the cupboard to look at a picture of the man he wanted to live with. Brian was sleeping soundly in his room. Seeing his exposed shoulders, Fluke sweetly tucks him in and runs to Carol's room to sleep next to her. Carol woke up in the morning terrified, but there was nothing she could do. While Brian went to class, Fluke explored the house. He found a hat in the checkroom and put it on, making Carol laugh, but then she bawled her eyes out at the thought of her husband's belongings. Fluke was there to comfort her in silence. When Brian was on vacation, he played ball with him on the lawn. Carol watched them from the second floor. Everything was so nice and cozy, but the peace was soon shattered. One day, a man named Jeff came to the house. Carol was obviously not prepared for him. She even left the door open when she realized he was coming. Fluke suddenly stood up and remembered that Jeff was the one who killed him. The man died and was reincarnated as a dog who not only found his wife and son, but also found out who killed him. It turns out Fluke was Carol's husband in a previous life. Before that, his best friend Jeff ran him over with his car and killed him. Now that the killer is right in front of him, Fluke pounces on him with a vengeance. Jeff was pinned down and attacked by Fluke, but Fluke was still an animal, and Jeff soon picked him up and threw him out of the house. Fluke was scratching the door and barking at Jeff through the window. Jeff thought he was crazy and called animal control. Brian was in the background, anxiously telling him not to hurt Fluke, not to call and take him away, but Jeff insisted on taking the dog into custody. Soon animal control arrived. Fook hid in the bushes to escape. Brian on the second floor was a little relieved when he saw it, but soon the sky began to pour with rain. Brian was worried that Fluke would catch a cold, so he went out in the rain and brought him home. To prevent him from barking again, Brian tied a silk scarf around his mouth. Concerned for Carol's safety, Fluke waited for Brian to fall asleep and crept over to his wife's door. Jeff was trying to get Carol to let go of her dead husband. When he kissed Carol, she didn't say no. Outside that door, Fluke stood in silence then turned and went back to his son's room. Alone, early in the morning, Jeff comes into Brian's room and tucks him in. Fluke, hiding under the bed, watched him quietly. Jeff then made breakfast in the kitchen and wrote a love note on a sticky note before driving to work. Jeff did what Fluke used to do and it left Fluke with mixed feelings. That man not only took his life, he took his life, his wife and his son. So Jeff went to the company that he and Jeff had started. He walked into his old office, avoiding everyone. Suddenly, the phone rings on his desk. Jeff went inside and picked it up. It was Carol. In her haste, she dialed the wrong number and said that Brian was missing and to make matters worse. He had a fever. Jeff rushed out of the office and drove to find Brian. The car was speeding down a mountain road. Fluke, hiding in the back of the car, suddenly bites Jeff. Jeff was taken by surprise, causing his car to run over the guardrail. And Fluke was thrown out of the car. The fall brought back all of Fluke's memories. He remembers that before the accident, he and Jeff were arguing about the company. Fluke can't contain his anger and smashes Jeff's gift. Jeff drove away from the company in a rage. Fluke didn't understand and drove after Jeff. And even drove into the opposite lane to drive parallel to Jeff. Suddenly, a big car came from the opposite direction. Fluke couldn't avoid it and hit the steering wheel hard and crashed into the mountain. It turned out that it caused the accident himself. Jeff not only didn't hurt him, he tried to save him. He pulled Fluke out of the car and gave him CPR. Fluke wasn't breathing. So he hugged his best friend and cried his eyes out. Remembering everything, Fluke realized his mistake. He limped to the front of the car to lick Jeff's wounds. As snow falls from the sky, Jeff told Fluke to find Brian because he was missing, regardless of his own safety. If he stays out all night in this weather, Brian will freeze to death. Fluke ran into the woods to look for Brian. With his senses, he came to his own cemetery and saw that Brian was here. Brian's body was covered in snow. Fluke used his small body to warm his son. The two of them snuggled up to each other. Meanwhile, Carol saw her son's drawing of her husband's grave, so she drove to the cemetery. In the wee hours of the morning, the gravity digger had locked the gate and left, so Carol crashed her car through the gate. First she took Brian into the car and turned on the heat to warm him up. Then she went for Fluke. Fluke and left yet. He limped and brushed the snow off the bottom of the headstone with his paw, revealing a small inscription at the bottom. I will always be there for you. Carol bursts into tears when she sees it. She looked at Fluke in shock, now feeling her husband's spirit in this dog. Just as she was about to take Fluke home, Fluke limped away. He turned back to say goodbye to his wife and son in silence, because only by leaving them alone could he move on with his life. Jeff later bought Brian a puppy. 
Brian smiled happily as it held it, and Carol saw a glimmer of sadness in her eyes. But that sadness quickly dissipated when she saw Jeff. Jeff is a good man, they should both get over the sadness of the past, and cherish the present to start a new life in the future. And Fluke started his wandering life alone. One day he was lying in the sun by the river, when a few pine cones suddenly fell from the trees. He looked up and found a little squirrel talking to him through a pine cone. The voice and tone sounded familiar. He hesitantly calls out Rumba's name, and the squirrel excitedly rushes down, and tells Fluke to never get rid of him again, in this life or the next. Neither of them is alone anymore. The core theme of the movie is not to dwell on the past, but to cherish the present. It's about saying goodbye to the unhappy past and living life to the fullest.